everybody. We're going to do number 11 today, or I am going to, and you are kind of with me. And before I start, there's I, I there's this leaf blower outside, like a person with a leaf blower outside. And you know the sound, if, if there's a mosquito that's within, I don't know what the distance would be, you know, within three inches of your ear and that that really high pitched squeal that it makes the leaf blower is comparably obnoxious at a greater distance uh you just like turn up the bass i don't know the mid-range also but then turn the treble way down the, the only real difference to me is i can't swat them the, the person would that would be like battery and and die there are ethical and uh, you know legal uh, sort of prohibitions that would stop me from doing that but but i do someday my life goal which i'm coming up with my my life goals at the moment i'm 42 and and i'm now establishing life goals is to live in a world in which leaves okay, like tree leaves can live out their golden years in peace Okay, they, they can be brown and crispy without being disturbed. Like that's, <laughs> that's what I, like. but today they leave their branch, they leave home, right? They pack their whatever and, and leave home. They make the voyage down to the street and 10 minutes later, they're euthanized. <laughs> like that just doesn't seem compassionate to nature. It, it to me, it's like I'll try not to phrase this indelicately, but when you see you're like downtown in a major city and there's a large homeless encampment, and you see law enforcement um, shepherding them away, kind of forcing them out of whatever environment they're presently occupying, it just in bulk. Um, that's what it feels, except with a gasoline-powered wind machine. Uh, but you might not be able to hear the, the, I hope you can hear me, but you might not be able to hear the ambient, you know, intrusions because of this. I got a new mic. Okay, it was $16.68, uh, accounting taxes and stuff. That's why it's a weird number. But that's about as technologically advanced as I'm going to get, because I just, I really, I don't care about technology. There was a time that I did, right? There, there were, when I was younger and, the, not, and novelty is always interesting, whatever the next development of something, that's interesting. So like when Pixar was like practically a startup, when it was like a boutique studio, and Toy Story was coming out. And I thought that was an interesting graphical presentation, uh, like, like a new form of storytelling almost. Um, I mean, the same, it's a movie with the you know, act structures and everything, but it's presented, it's a different genre of music is what it felt like. And whenever something new like that is presented when it comes out, I pay attention because it is fascinating. But the novelty is what makes it interesting. And you fast forward the world from Toy Story to like Monsters, Inc. And I'm bored to death. <laughs> it's just, it's not a genre that I care about. I mean, it's just at this point, watching that type of presentation, um, sort of computer animation is painful to me uh, because it seems to lack humanity my interpretation, the impression it gives me, the feeling I get is a lack of humanity. Now, animation, not computer animation, but like paintings and drawings, take an old Miyazaki movie, um, you know, Castle in the Sky or Nausicaa or whatever. Those are filled with humanity, even though they're drawings right so so i see these things very differently um today the only thing that is fascinating to me about technology is when it is new and it's just not anymore i mean pretty much everybody on youtube everybody anywhere on the internet has the technological equivalent of like toy story 12 and i'm not interested you know what i want is human connection 
And Toy Story 12 removes me from that, but it helps, I think, if you can hear my words. <laughs> and I hope that's what the microphone does. I hope it keeps away the, I hope this is what $17 accomplishes, that it keeps away the bassy mosquitoes and it permits my voice to be heard with, with less interruption. So with that, let's move on to number uh, 11. Number 11, Saturday, November 12th, 2021, fantastic nonfiction. Hi, everyone. I woke up this morning wondering, do obsessive fantasy readers also cherish historical nonfiction, like medieval documentaries and history-adjacent films like Braveheart? Even though there isn't a single appearance of dragons? I mean, not what? Dragon and the whole damn thing. It's pretty good, you know. I can't say I watch it every year, but every few years, when the weather turns cold and the leaves start to fall, yeah, I'll put it in. Light a couple of candles, get some hot chocolate on the burner. But it's a sugar-free version now. If I'm old enough to be nostalgic about old Mr. Wallace, then I'm far too old to trouble my metabolism. Also, they don't make music like they used to, you know? When I was growing up, a musician was someone who could really play an instrument. Nowadays, it seems like everyone's some kind of artist. The good news is, I have two weeks of sick leave saved up. Maybe I'll play hooky with work one day next week and cozy up with some Braveheart. If that wasn't tangential enough, I have two more sidetracks I want to travel before returning to the main road i.e. do obsessive fantasy readers also cherish historical nonfiction? First detour and route to my original point, film, as in the film continues on disc two, or any reference to film that's streaming on Netflix. Just as literally, but, but perhaps more obviously, one does not listen to books on tape. Uh, from Audible. Secondarily, and more importantly, I realize Mel Gibson is a divisive figure. And I acknowledge that my example could have been a less controversial movie. Another word I disapprove of, only because it sounds as childish as doggies and jammies and homies. But A, I perceive cancellation and the culture that manifests it, that manifestos it, uh, to be a consequence of insufficient empathy. I believe we are capable of more compassion when confronted with callous thoughts and hurtful remarks. And B, it's not as though I'm entertaining a whimsical what if about Gibson playing Dumbledore. Oh man, those battle scenes would have been way more intense. I'm just observing that a celebrity who made some inhumane comments about humanity did an exemplary job directing, co-producing, and starring in Braveheart. Imagine alternative casting. Wallace Shawn, as in William Wallace Shawn. See them, he cries hilariously. Okay, let's return to my original curiosity. Is medieval nonfiction a suitable surrogate for fantasy? For me, it can be, but only if the storytelling is good, and it usually isn't. Documentaries often handle information as indelicately as journalism, no withheld facts, so there's no tension, so I don't experience an emotional response, so I don't connect with it sentimentally, so I don't derive value beyond its facts. But if nonfiction is, prevent is, is presented effectively, I can enjoy that more than fantasy, but my enjoyment never outlives the runtime. It's almost a form of parasitism. As soon as the host ends, so dies the pleasure it was sustaining. Next year, as the weather begins to turn, there will be no reunion. Only the tendrils of fiction can ensnare my attention year after year. And that brings us to my next thought. What repeat reading or listening or viewing says about our value structure? Next journal, I'm done with this morning's thought, compassionately, nostalgically, and sleepily, me. Okay, that's it for this morning's. I hope your day is free from mosquitoes and their basic counterparts. Okay, and full of leaves. Okay, bye, everyone.